Dr. Gail Kranzberg. I'm the professor and director of the Engineering and Public Policy program at McMaster University. So what are the greatest challenges to the Great Lakes right now? Uh, historically, the challenges to the Great Lakes were point source pollution, industries, heavy machinery, um, but we've been, we've been very good at being able to regulate those. You know, we've had engineering solutions, top-down approach, you know, command and control, and we've eliminated a lot of chemicals from production. We've gotten rid of a lot of industrial effluents. The issues of today are a lot more diffuse and complex. We're dealing with invasive species coming into the Great Lakes from many different pathways, whether it's ships or aquariums or bait trade, and it's not clear who's responsible for making them stop. We've got a changing climate, which means the way that we expected uh, the weather to work, the way that we expected our infrastructure, our water infrastructure to work, doesn't work that way anymore. And that's, we're talking about billions of dollars of all the infrastructure that needs to be upgraded in the face of climate change uncertainty, and who's going to pay for that? We have more and more sprawling communities, paving over more and more green space, individual activities on their individual properties that are hardening our shorelines, hardening our, our green space, and those are individual behavioral choices. We don't have rules and regulations surrounding those. And all of these are starting to integrate with the older problems of chemicals, chemical pollution and nutrient enrichment. And because it's so complicated, so many people need to be involved in the solutions, where we, we need to look for a sort of a binational set of rules for how we're going to play the new game. Well, we have an opportunity now to address this complicated um, soup of, of, of insults. The binational protocol for how we manage the Great Lakes is called the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement. It was last updated in 1987 and in the last 24 years there's been a lot of new science, there's been a lot of new uh, innovations, technology, new players in the, in the region. We have an opportunity under a brand new renegotiated agreement to address these new threats in binational ways to involve more than just two federal governments or two federal departments, but a whole suite of agencies from municipal, municipal agencies, provincial, First Nations, state, businesses, industries, angos, academics who have never really been brought to the table. And we have a way to do it now that, that could address these new threats and create opportunities for flexibility in that agreement so that when there's a new suite of chemicals that are of concern to us, we have a process for identifying those and prioritizing what we're going to do with those at a binational scale. So I'm very excited that we're at a point where this binational agreement is being renegotiated and where we all can have a voice on what we'd like to see happen with it. One of the classes of chemicals that we have no, um, no mention of in the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement are pharmaceuticals and personal care products. So, so we are finding at the outfalls of our sewage treatment plants, male fish with ovaries because of all these pharmaceuticals that have estrogenic properties. Now, we're not suggesting that we can ban pharmaceuticals because they save lives. So what we need right now is innovation and technology to destroy these things before they get out of their sewage treatment plant into the receiving water. A lot of people are talking about destroying it in drinking water, but you know, the fish are drinking the water in the Great Lakes. So you need to get rid of those at the treatment facilities, and I'd like to see some innovation in, in engineering technology that can do that. We know it can be done, we know it's expensive, we also know it's necessary. One of the questions that I would really like to see answered is how much water are we taking out of the Great Lakes? What I mean is, most people think of the Great Lakes as this vast resource. The Great Lakes is a relic, it's a glacial relic, it's a swimming pool. It gets renewed by rainwater 1% a year. And yet we allow people to take water out for irrigation, for cooling, some of it is cons consumed. What proportion of that 1% is consumed? So we know when to stop allowing more water takings from the Great Lakes. Nobody I've asked can answer that question.